got to run. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest tonight is Jonathan Klein from the Dashing Whippets. Jonathan is a very gifted runner, but nobody ever heard of him as of 2013. So we're going to learn all about Jonathan at tonight's show. So please welcome Jonathan Klein. Hi, Will. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's, a, it's an honor, and uh, I'm very grateful to be here. Thank Great. you. Great. Let's get started, Jonathan, as I do with all my shows. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself. For example, where were you born? Is something about your childhood. I was actually born in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, I grew up in a town called Bloomfield, Connecticut, which is just outside of Hartford, and I spent, spent my, formid my uh, formative years there uh, through um, uh, high school. Um, uh, nothing, nothing sportive to speak of. I really didn't do anything as far as sports or activities. I was pretty, a pretty sedentary child. And um, uh, for college, I went to Syracuse University. I was there for five years. I graduated with my degree in music, uh, music industry. Um, moved to New York. Uh, started an internship with a record distributor, and um, um, uh, and then uh, subsequently moved into New York City and lived here for. Uh, in 83, and I lived here for a few years, um, went back to grad school uh, for voice and opera in uh, 85. 85. This is Manus? This is Manus College of Music, thank you. That's a very, very petitious school. Well, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks. I was part of the very first class of uh, master's candidates in voice. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were kind of trailblazers back then. I'd, uh, I'd met the mother of my children there, and uh, we became very good friends, and subsequently um, uh, began seeing each other and got married. And um, so I was there for two years. Uh, after that, I was an itinerant singer, actor for a number of years. Really? Any uh, famous uh, commercials or...? <laughs> Uh, I actually kind of puttered along um, doing this and that for a number of years, and in my middle 30s, um, without any previous background, I got very fortunate. I was I was managed and my uh, uh, for classical music, and my classical mu musical manager, uh, my um, he sent me in for a call that turned out to be for a production, the first national company of Beauty and the Beast out in Los Angeles, cool. with most of the original cast. So um, I did that for years. My first experience at musical theater. What part did you play? I was what's known as a swing. So I, I um, rotated in for um, four of the ensemble slots. Uh, I played the evil Monsieur Dark, um, who was the character who Gaston, if you remember the the, uh, the show at all, Gaston's a, the big strong man who's always trying to get Belle, and okay. Belle oh, wants no part oh, of you him. You played Gaston? No, no. I, I was. Ga uh, Monsieur Dark is, is the gentleman that Gaston um, um, uh, comes to. He's the head of the insane oh, asylum. Oh, I see, I see. And, uh, and Gaston says, I want you to, I want you to put uh, Belle's father away, and then when you put the father away, then okay. I'll be able to get to Belle, and, okay. and I get to be evil and wring my hands. Okay. And, so, uh, and I did that for a year, and then um, uh, long about the turn of the century, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I, uh, I left for Europe. I worked in Europe for three years doing theater. In 2000? Uh, yeah, from 98 to 2001. Okay. I did a couple shows over there, um, actually three shows over there. And, uh, Beauty and the Beast, to me? One of them was Beauty and the Beast in German. Coincidentally, with the same sets, they'd sold the uh, L.A. sets to the Stuttgart cast, the uh, Stuttgart Theater. So I walked in and saw all of my costumes. So you speak German? Or? Uh, a little bit, very okay. badly. I'm not even going to embarrass okay, myself on right. television by right. trying to uh, attempt to speak German, but okay. uh, enough to be dangerous. Okay. Yeah. But when did the uh, running start? Well, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. I, um, well, to me anyway. Uh, I always had this feeling in the back of my head, kind of in the same sense that I always knew that I could sing. Uh, that if I did do any kind of physical activity, and believe me, I'm an awful athlete, just okay. the worst, um, running would be it. And so, um, and I had some experiences in college where I ran with friends who were very good runners. And um, I was not huge, but I was kind of on the heavier side, um, but had lost a significant amount of weight while in college and um, ran a little bit there and, and felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. So in my middle 20s, I started to just run for fitness. You know, whatever, six, seven days a week, I guess, but maybe three or five miles at a time. Okay. Nothing, you know, just kind of go out and do it. Okay. And then in my later 20s, I started just for fun entering some fun runs and races. Uh, I entered a 5K that was run up at Columbia University. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and I ended up finishing fourth. 
Now, I had no clue what that meant. <laughs> Overall. Overall. That's good. Yeah. And, uh, but I had no clue what that meant. Okay. And then I did, like, the, remember the old Midnight Run? It's, yes. Yeah. They still had those. Yeah, they still have those, but it, the it, format's it different now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I did that one year, I think in 1990 I did that, and, you know, ran like 28 minutes or something. You know, something decent, but okay. not, not, you know. Seven minute miles, that's decent. Uh, yeah. I believe the Midnight Run is four miles. Four, I think at that time it, w it was five. Five? Yeah. Oh my gosh, even better. <laughs> yeah. At that time it was five miles. And then Maybe it still is. I don't I haven't, I haven't no, I done it. I think you're right. I think it's four now. Okay. Yeah. And then, if I got it into my head, that I would do a marathon. And mind you, I'm doing all this other stuff too, like studying voice and trying to get work. And, and you were married at that point? And I was married at the time, yeah. With babies on the way? With, uh, yeah, the kids were born in 1990, so the kids were, when I ran the marathon, they were a year old. Okay. So uh, for some strange reason, which to this day uh, is unfathomable to me, I decided to, uh, to train for a marathon. I went out and I bought uh, Jeff Galloway's book on running. Excellent. And I just met Jeff for the first time uh, at uh, at Jackrabbit uh, about a month, two months ago. Oh yes, yes, he comes there every year. Right. So I met my, I finally met my coach after after <laughs> 30, 35 years. I bought the book. Uh, I picked out something that looked to me because again I had no clue, and I said, oh well, here's a training thing for a 2:40 marathon. And because uh, he had he he had delineated the book by how fast you wanted to run. Right. So I, you picked 240 as a good I had number. No clue. So I picked that training program. I did all of the work. I ran the marathon in '91. Uh, again, I got in on the lottery. Total total luck. And um, found myself running uh, the first half of the race with the in a pack with the elite women. And I was wearing a red bandana. I looked pretty silly. And uh, uh, thinking, golly, this is kind of fun. What am I doing here? <laughs> My God! In those days, you started all together. We started all. Everyone started together. Oh, that's got to be a highlight to run with the elites. Yeah, it was really kind of cool. But you have to understand too. It, it when I look at it now in retrospect, it really was an incredible thing back then. I mean, I was an idiot. I okay. didn't know. I didn't know any better. I had okay. no clue. I had no. Uh, I, I didn't know what was fast. I didn't know what was slow. Um, and. Um, I was on about a 235, 240 pace up until 103rd Street and 5th Avenue, just about four miles from the finish, uh, when literally both my calves froze. I, I broke down and um, I finished the race, but I had to run, with, if you imagine these are my feet, my heels hitting the, hitting the ground, but my toes in the air, so I was doing maybe 12, 13 minute miles up to the finish and lost a bunch of time. I did break... Uh, uh, three hours. I, I did break three hours. and. Uh, uh, the most edifying moments in my life, I, can, I guess I can safely say, was rounding that corner um, after being on Central Park South, coming into the park and hearing the guy in the intercom go, if you can hear the sound of my voice, you will break three hours. And so I, I gathered myself up and I, I think I actually even passed somebody to the, <laughs> going up to the finish even line. Even though you were... You were <laughs> oh, I was a mess. <laughs> So you broke three hours. I 91. did. Ninety-one. Two fifty-seven thirty-eight. I think. Was excellent. My yeah. That's that's the gold standard. That is. And then excellent. I. Well, thank you. And then I retired and gained seventy pounds. You <laughs> <laughs> guessed that this was enough for you. It not was enough. Uh, I broke three hours. That's that was that that kind of put you people had indicated to me that was some kind of gold standard. Okay, that's right. You retired on top. I did it. It's like everything I do. I jumped out of a plane. Okay, I did that. You know, you I have jumped out of a plane. I have, I have jumped out of a plane. Oh, okay. So you had your bucket list and you did your three-hour marathon. Yeah, yeah. So then I, I quit and got really fat and, and lazy. Through the 90s, I was focused more on my singing and acting career and, okay. again, had some success and was working um, intermittently, doing some good work. The, the, the Disney show came along at that time and my work in Europe came along toward the end of that period and I was doing other things like opera and concert okay. stuff. Well, let's, uh, let's, since time is limited, let's jump ahead. So, sure. So you're now a member of the Dashing Whippets. Yes. And you're even, the, you're an editor too. You do the Running Dog yeah. blog. I haven't, been as, I haven't been as good about that lately as I could be, but we're, we're, we're working on getting it back together. Well, I read a few stories last night, you know, in my research on you, and I said, geez, uh, these, these are good writers. I mean, I was impressed with the writing. It's very difficult to get people to write anything it nowadays. It is, it is. You have to kind of, you have to kind of go bug them, pull well, some teeth. Sounds, sounds like you're good at that. But anyway, <laughs> what happened that got you, that drew you back into running? Something well, must have happened that said, I got to do it again. Uh, I actually got tired of being uh, um, out of shape, and so I'd started to get back into shape. And um, uh, I, while in Europe, 
um, I had been <coughs> uh, involved with somebody over there. The relationship ended. It was, as you can imagine, if you've, uh, you know, for the relationships that you've been in or anybody, it can be very depressing, and you yep. tend to put your energy into things that you think will help you. Yeah. So I immediately dropped a lot of weight, and I started running again, and I got into great shape. I came home. Um, uh, back to the States, I was still running, um, you know, and uh, I was living down in the village and I would run out over to the park, over to a Riverside, uh, uh, to the Hudson, run up to the park and run around, uh, come back home, um, and, um, and gradually got my weight down to uh, where I was looking decent again. And I continued to run on intermittently at a recreational level through the beginning parts of the, the 2000s, from 2001 up to maybe um, the last couple of years, um, and was fine with that recreationally. Uh, uh, I was in decent shape. Um, I had another uh, long-term relationship uh, and at uh, the end of 2012, and again, I, I kind of turned to this endeavor to uh, help break me out of the funk that I was in. Um, again, I dropped some weight. Found more weight. More, more weight. And found myself back at my former running weight when I was running, you know, in my 20s and early 30s. Okay. Uh, and moving really well. I mean, all the aches and pains that I had had up to that point, uh, and believe me, I had my share, and, you know, older runners we do. Yeah. Um, ha had abated to the extent where I was moving really well. I've always been a, a very solitary sort of person, Will. Um, uh, but I wanted to do some things differently, so I said, "What could I do that would be different?" Well, I don't. I've never really raced, a, you know, to any great extent. Maybe I'll try that, and maybe I'll align myself with a team. So, uh, in a very kind of pragmatic, um, um, logical way, I went to the New York Roadrunners site. I eliminated. I looked at the list of teams. I eliminated all the ones that, because of their geographic or they were for women or whatever, weren't appropriate. Uh, and then I started to go down the alphabetical list, and Dashing Whippets was first. <laughs> I went to a workout, and I said, okay, this is, you know, this is fine. I'll stay here. <laughs> and then I started racing with them. So, so it because all the clubs in New York are really fabulous. Oh, they so are, it's just luck that it, you got into the Dashing Whippets. It's such a great community. I mean, because, uh, you know, could yeah. have been the Flyers, and you would have enjoyed them just as much. Absolutely. I mean, I have friends, on, I have, uh, friends and acquaintances on, on many, many of the teams here, and, and it's just such a... Uh, Especially in the masters community, I mean, there's just there's a lot of really good energy, and that I, that uh, I really um, it, it's it's very heartwarming. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, but you know, you're more than just a masters. You've been nominated for you know best runner a couple of times in your age group. You know, so how did it? When did you realize? Because in your younger days, you didn't know you were going fast. Right. But now you were getting accolades. It's like, wow, 50, 54, and you're coming in first or second or third. Yeah. And New York is a tough, tough, tough competitive market in that age group. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's because it, I didn't. I didn't have any kind of. I did um, my first race. I did a um, a 5K. It's called the Run for the Run for the Wild up through Bronx Zoo. Um, back before I started racing with the Whippets. I just joined, and I finished third in that race. And I said, I'll be happy running, you know, 18, 19 minutes at that, because... For four or five K. Yeah, yeah. And then I came in, the kid hand me, handing me my time was like 16.44, and I was like... That's <laughs> two minutes better than This you is just weird. Um, I didn't believe it. Anyway, so I came back, and I, people were asking me, so how'd you do in that race? And, uh, and they, I told them, and like, they looked at me kind of weird, which you know, I would look at myself weird. Um, my first points race for them was, was uh, running Portugal Day in 2013. Uh, and I ran under 28 minutes for that. For a? For five mile. Five miles, wow. Yeah, which was better I, than I, what I was running when I was younger. So you were doing better than six minute miles? I was doing, yeah, my pace was, I guess, 533, 534. Oh my goodness, and, and you're what age at that point? Just turned 53. <laughs> and I had, and then that, that was the beginning of what was a really, really great summer for me. Um, I was blessed to be able to move very quickly over a number of races. I won my age group a number of times, which, uh, you know, I got, and they're just, as you said, so many great runners. Um, and uh, I was lucky because maybe one or two of the better ones that were, were injured at that time, <laughs> so I didn't have to really compete against them. Uh, as my coach likes to say, I had that honeymoon period where I'd just been running kind of straight miles, no specific training, okay. um, and my legs were fresh. So your last six months of 2013 was your golden years. I mean, yeah, golden era, much. so to speak. Yeah, because it's become 
it's become much harder now. Because you got injured at some point? I have been injured, but I think it's more, um, it's funny, we're trying to figure this out. And again, uh, I have this discussion with uh, Jimmy Lynch, who's my coach. And um, Jimmy uh, has in, he, Jimmy's indicated to me that there is a honeymoon period involved where your body just um, is fresh, it's kind of ready to go. Um, so you would think that um, if you, you go, well, I'm, I'm running fast now, so if I get into focus training, I should run even faster, um, that you would. But it's really not the case, and maybe it's, uh, I'm sure that the age thing has something to do with yeah. it as well. And, I, and I've read from some other elite runners as well that they go through this uh, also, that my body needs to adjust to the training. So I'm not running nearly as fast now as I did last year. Okay. So I'm looking now at the 2014 is kind of a retooling, and then 2015 I'll come out with guns blazing. You know, it's possible because, um, you know, um, someone like Kevin Shelton Smith, who was a guest on this show. Um, he was a late, sort of, sort of a late bloomer yeah. as well. Yeah, and he had a 2013 that was really great, but he's having an even better 2014. So, To his surprise as well. Oh, he's a monster. I was running with him uh, in the Team Champs. I ran up to him. Uh, we were running together for the first part of the race. I said, Kevin, you're my hero. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin loves hearing that. He sure does. He's a great guy. So this year is your recovery, your, your training seriously for the first time in your career, so it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you do the blog for the Dashing Whippets. Now, what is it about the Dashing Whippets besides being a great group of people? You know, what is it that keeps you there? Um, you know, the, um, it, it's an interesting question. What keeps me there is the, uh, is the constant support of, um, of a number of individuals on the team. Um, Matthew Wong and I have grown very, very close. He's, of course, one of the co-founders, um, and he's just incredibly supportive. I mean, there are other guys, you know, like Michael Alcamo and Ned Cunningham, um, Fred Lacau, um, uh, Patricia Tarona, um, you know, just uh, Simon, uh, Simon Durkin. Durkin. Um, they've all been very supportive of my efforts. Um, I'm incredibly appreciative to their, okay. you know, willingness to, you know, be there and, and uh, for the team. and. Um, uh, it's really great to uh, to really be with people who are dedicated um, to this athletic endeavor and also to, to like add a human face to it because we're not just a running team of course but we're very involved uh, in, in you know a lot of the social issues around the city and um, and a lot of fun stuff too I mean there's a really strong uh, social element to the team yes um, there's the crazy ultra guys there's the middle distance guys like myself uh -huh. uh, there's the people in between um, and um, uh, you know, so it's just a really, it's a really good mix of people. Well, I, I am personally impressed with the dashing whippers, as you know. There's so many people that do different things. You know, this is, yeah. you know, usually it's 20% of the work is done by, I mean, 80% of the work is done by 20% here. It seems like 80% of the people are doing 100% of the work. You know, this, uh, for example, you took on the, the blog, The Running Dog. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, so are you a writer by uh... Uh, it's it's very interesting um, I like to write uh, I get I get kind of in, in in truth be told I get kind of lazy about it I get lazy about a lot of things but more importantly uh, I enjoy editing ah. so it's I'm um, it's very it's very easy for me to um, and I enjoy getting pieces in um, the folks that, that have submitted are really good about saying, you know, this is not, this is what it is. And I go, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll give it a once over. You know, we'll look at it and we'll see. And, and they've been very good about my edits. I read into it last night in preparation for tonight. I was very impressed. I said, thank you. Wow, these, these whippets know how to run, how to know how to write and run. I said, well, I'm incredibly good. Yeah, they've handed me some. I mean, it, it's not, it's, it, it, my edits are minimal. I mean, it's, they really, uh, oh, we have a lot of smart That's excellent. Group. But, you know, that's a way of giving back. Yeah. And we're going to turn to the musical interlude part of the, of the show. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and I wanted to tell us what they're going to be playing. I think your sons are going to be here. Right. My what are you guys going to do? My twin boys are going to be here. They're 24, and they have their own group, the New York Troubadours. And uh, we'll actually be playing, if I can do a shameless plug, we're going to be at Bartholia tonight, uh, which is uh, in the uh, underside of Symphony Space on 90, uh, 95th and Broadway. Oh, yes, I know I guess, that space very well. Right. Or do you have a website that people can look up? Yeah, uh, troubadourstrio.com.
Great, it'll probably have a schedule there. And they probably will have a schedule there. Oh, cool. Okay. In closing, before we break for interlude, is there anything you want to say to your, to your fans, to your family, to the dashing whippets? This is your camera. I'd just like to say hello to everybody out there. If I left out some names in my long list of, of, um, of thank yous for folks on the Whippets, there's just so many of you that it's impossible to name all of the people that I've grown to love uh, and appreciate on the team. I appreciate uh, not only that, but uh, the support of those folks uh, in the whole running community that have uh, really taken, uh, taken me in. And, um, you know, it's just been a really, um, it's been a really joyful ride so far. Uh, very challenging at this point. Again, I don't like being this slow. I want to be faster. Uh, and hopefully I'll get back to that very, very soon. So, um, you know, much love to everybody out there in the community. Excellent. Well, folks, on that, we'll take a break. I'll be right back with Jonathan and his twin boys. Hi, everybody. We're the New York Troubadours. This is my son, Nick Klein, and my other son, Sam Klein. And the first song, the first song we're going to do for you was actually written by their stepdad. And um, it's part of a whole concept album that came out in the 70s for a, a, a children's-themed uh, show called Free to Be You and Me. And as it turns out, this is the title cut. So um, we're going to do for you a little Free to Be You and Me. One, two, one, two, three. There's a land that I see where the children are free. And I say it ain't far to this land from where we are. Take my hand and come with me where the chill children are free. Come with me and take my hand and we'll live in our land where the river runs free. In our land to a green country. In our land to a shining sea. And you and me are free to be. I see a land bright and clear And the time's coming near When we'll live in this land You and me hand in hand Take my hand and come along Come lend your voices to my song Come along and take my hand Sing a song For a land where the river runs free For a land to a green country For a land to a shining sea For a land where the horses run free And you and me are free to be You and me Every boy in this land grows to be his own man and Take my hand, come with me, where the children are free. Come with me and take my hand, and we'll run to a land where the river runs free. To a land, to a green country, to a land, to a shining sea. To a land where the horses run free. And you and me are free to And you and me are free to you and me He's a real nowhere man Sitting in his nowhere land Making all his nowhere plans to nobody Doesn't have a point of view Knows not where he's going to Isn't he a bit like you and me? Nowhere man, ah, please listen ah, You don't know ah, what you're missing ah, Nowhere ah, man, the world ah, is at your command he can be just sees what he wants to see nowhere man can you see me at all nowhere man ah, don't worry take your time don't worry leave it all till somebody else lends you a Sitting in his nowhere land 
making all his nowhere plans for nobody. Making all his nowhere plans for nobody. Making all his nowhere plans.